My name is Chris, and I am so glad that you are watching today. Today, we'll be joining our scientist friend Calvin for an experiment. But first, let's get started with a game called What's in the Box? Everybody, welcome. Uh, this is one of my favorite games. This is a parent versus kids game. Hi, my name is William Pearson. Uh, my name is Alan. I'm Kathy. All right, here we go. Round one, parents versus kids. What's in the box? Oh, oh, it's like slimy. slimy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. What is that? Oh, Noodles? Uh, it's like, it's cold. Cat food? No, not cat food. Oh, it's bad. I don't know what this is. It's gross. Is it like candy? Eat it. Ew. Yeah, eat it. Can I smell it? Oh. Wait, is it? Oh, is it? I think I'll give this one to William. Oh! It is anchovies. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Oh, uh, flour. Is it flour? It, it's it's powdery. It's soft. It's um, crumbly. A bit crumbly. Uh, it's not flour. It's not baking soda. Sure. Chris, I don't know. This is so hard. Is it, is it something mixed with something else? Yes. When you and and um, it's meant to be mixed with more things in order to make something else. Baby powder? No. No. Um, I'm shaking my head when to answer you. Know on the <laughs> um, flour and powdered sugar meant to be mixed with something more. Like, um, oh, like cake mix, cake batter, cake, like a cake mix, brownie mix, something oh, like that. I'll give you that. It's pancake no? mix. I feel like it's something oh, uh, I, wow. Chicken nuggets? Oh, chicken, some, oh, it comes apart. Oh, specific. Oh, oh it is frozen. This is, oh, chicken drumsticks? Chicken drumsticks, I will count. How did you fall oh. apart, Mom? I don't know. I guess I was going after it. Yeah. Got this. Ooh. You guys are going for a treat. <laughs> Sorry, guys, for doing this to you. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, no. What is that? Tarantulas. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. no, it's not it's tarantulas. It's like a fish or something. Why are the fish... All frozen, right. frozen vegetables? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Three you go first. Um, is that a food item? Yeah. Technically. Oh, it's not a food item. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Nothing's gonna... Where is this a food it's item? It's alive. Wait, is it worms? <laughs> yes, it is worms. worms. Wait, is it worms? Oh, oh, oh. You only touched it for a moment. Oh, I hate worms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you totally earned that one, Will. That one took right. me by surprise. <laughs> totally. <laughs> As you could tell. I don't know how I thought that was frozen vegetables. Coffee. Oh, it's another dark. I don't want to reach it. Jelly? Yes. Oh, let me see. Oh. It was still. Yes. All right, you're making oh, jelly. jelly. Oh, no, Thank you all so much for for even being willing to touch worms. You guys are awesome. Bye. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Next, let's get ready to answer a question of the day. Our question of the day is, if you could choose a superpower to have, what would you pick? Think about your answer. If you're watching with a group of people, talk about your answers together. We'll be back in just a few seconds.
Got your answer? Great. I've always wanted super speed. That would be awesome. Next, I'm going to send it over to our scientist friend named Calvin. Hi, everyone. Welcome to CalQuest, where we discover something new every day. Watch CalQuest! I am Calvin, and this is my co-host, the Discovery Box. Say hi, Discovery Box. He's a big chatter. Tell me something I don't know, Discovery Box. A person's tongue is as unique as their fingerprint. Wow. What if, instead of unlocking your phone with your fingerprint, you unlocked it with your tongue print? In the last few weeks on CalQuest, we've been exploring our world. Since God made the whole world, the world can teach us a lot about God. I got a great question in the mail this week. Da 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 da! Hey Calvin, I'm a big fan of CalQuest, but I've got a lot of questions about why God made things. Like me. For instance, if God made me, why couldn't he have made me, I don't know, better? I've wondered that a lot too. Sometimes I want to change something about myself or make it better. That's why today, I'm experimenting with something that everyone is really bad at, seeing colors. Now I know this one, obviously this one is green. Or... <sighs> now that's weird to say because we see colors pretty well, but some animals are way better. We can see around seven million colors. If you look around, there's probably hundreds of colors. Black, green, different black, yellow in the face, um, gray, silvery gray, clear. Think of a sunset or a day when the leaves change. Hundreds of thousands of different colors. Bright, dark, vibrant, exciting, pale. And we don't even have words for all of them yet. It gets crazier though. Every one of those colors comes from mixing these three primary colors. Blue, red, and yellow. Yeah. I can just imagine what the first people on Earth felt when they saw these colors like the blue in the ocean. And we're gonna wait for it to stop dripping here because I put too much on it. Or the red in a sunset. God made almost everything by talking and just saying things like, let there be light. Let there be yellow in this corner. And plants start growing. We're going to mix these two in here. That looks good. He made all kinds of colors, like the orange in fire and the purple in flowers. This one is going to be the easiest, so I saved it for last. And since I love green, of course, I'm just gonna put green everywhere. Oh, that looks, that looks wonderful. That's, oh yeah, I don't care. Still makes green. All those things were amazing, but God didn't stop there. Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God made a man. He made him out of the dust of the ground. God breathed the breath of life into him. I think God wanted someone to see this amazing world, to live in it, to get to know God through it. That's what we talked about last week. God made this world so we could know him. God put us in this world for an important reason. He made us out of dust and a bunch of other stuff the Bible doesn't list, because obviously, you know, we're not dust now, and put his own breath into us. Even though we're God's creation, there are some things we aren't the best at like seeing colors. Did you know that God made colors that we can't even see? In fact, color-wise, we're really missing out to this guy. We can only see three different primary colors, but a lot of butterflies can see a fourth. We can only see this spectrum, but butterflies can see a whole bunch more. So what's the big deal with one new primary color? Well, that primary color mixes with each one of the other colors on the spectrum. So instead of seeing seven million colors, there's billions of colors that we can't even see or imagine. I like to call this thing Florgishmorg. This has a lot to do with our Cal question. If we're God's greatest creation, why didn't he make us the greatest at everything? I mean, why can butterflies see stuff that we can't? I mean, look at him. Like, he's tiny. Shouldn't God have made us the best at everything? This is an important question, and you can ask it a lot of ways. One of which being, why did God make me the way that I am? Have you ever wondered this? I know I have. I mean, most people aren't envious of butterflies or animals, but what about when other people have something that you don't? 
I mean, why are some people better at basketball than I am? I, I mean, I'm athletic. Ish. Why do people get better grades than me without even trying? Why does this person get the solo and I don't? I can see that. You're actually amazing. You can see. Why do I live where I do? Why is my hair this color? Why am I short or tall? Why did God give me this problem that my friends don't have? Why did God make me different from others? I asked those questions a lot a couple of years ago. I didn't feel like I was good enough in school, especially in gym class. I just wanted to be stronger and faster than everyone else, but didn't want to work super hard for it. I used this invention that made me super strong, but I was kind of cheating. I made a big mess of things, but I learned a lot about why God made me the way he did. I may not be the strongest, fastest, or the smartest. I should be the smartest, but I may not be. I will always be God's child. Nothing can change that. The way God made me is for a super important reason with all of its ups and downs. So what's the answer? Why did God make you the way you are? To find out, let's jump back to the butterfly. I take it back, he is pretty cute. They can see billions of colors, even these ultraviolet shades. They can see things that we never will. Whoa! The black light highlights some of the things that butterflies would see. We don't know what color they would be, but they can spot the colors of flowers and other butterflies from a long way off because of this supervision. But their sight comes at a cost. They can see tons of colors, but they're super nearsighted. If butterflies had to take a vision test like we do, they would, they would totally fail. Um, P. No, that's not correct. Butterflies see what they need to. They see flowers and can pick out butterflies hundreds of feet in the sky. But if we saw like they do, we wouldn't be able to read, drive, or do hundreds of other things. They were made with a purpose, but there are still some things that they can't do. I'm glad I can see the way I do, even if it's different from the butterfly. What if we don't have to be the best at everything to have a great purpose? God made the butterfly like this because it needs to see the things that we don't. I bet he made me and you the way we are for a very important reason. Even though I can't tell you exactly why you are the way you are, it's a good thing to remember. God made you for an amazing purpose. He gave you your friends, your family, and your talents for a very important reason. He designed you to be you. God made me to love science and to be really good at figuring things out. Also, he did give me the talent to dance. No one is good at everything, but every one of you has an important purpose. Maybe you can use what God has made you good at to help someone else. Maybe God made something difficult for you so you could have a better chance to grow. You are an important part of God's story. Whether you're short or tall, whether you love sports or you'd rather be reading, or whether you can see a hundred billion colors, or just a hundred. The more you get to know God and spend time with Him, the easier it will be for you to know what God wants you to do. Even if you don't see the reason why, God has an awesome purpose for you. That's where I'll leave it today, but I will be back next week for another episode of CalQuest. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sign off, Big Shark. Goodbye. God made every person with a purpose. In fact, check out this verse from the very beginning of the Bible. In Genesis 1.27, it says, God created human beings in his own likeness. He created them to be like himself. He created them as male and female. Another way people sometimes say this is that we're made in God's image. What this means is so important. Earlier, Calvin pointed out that God created and designed you. He created your eyes, your hair, your skin, every part of you, inside and out. He designed not just your body, but your heart, your mind, everything. He made you special and unique, unlike anyone else in the world. Imagine for a moment, you're walking through an art gallery, and all the paintings are by one person. You see beautiful landscapes, an amazing painting of the ocean. You might think, 
wow, this person is a great artist, or wow, they really like the ocean. But then you get to a painting the artist made of themselves. They call that a self-portrait. What could that tell you about the artist? So much, right? You can see their face, their nose, their eyes, their hair. This painting shows you what the artist is really like. Did you know that the Bible says you are like a work of art that God has made? God created so many beautiful things, so many works of art in our world, but that verse we read says every person in this world is made in God's likeness. We are different than everything else God made. In fact, we're like a self-portrait of God. Now, we don't, that doesn't mean we look exactly like God does, though. We don't have his hair, his eyes, or his nose. Instead of things like that, God's desire for us, his purpose for us, is that when someone looks at you, they experience and see his love, creativity, mercy, justice, and hope. So, we were made to show others who God is. But I don't want you to miss this. I'm not the only one made in God's image. You're not the only one made in God's image. Every person in the world is made in God's image. Now, you might be thinking, but we're all so different. How can we all be pictures of God? The thing is, God is so big so powerful, so incredible, that it's not just one kind of person that shows who he is. It's all of us. Our differences are designed by God just like the things we have in common. Think about it. If everyone was the same, what would life be like? We wouldn't learn from each other because we'd be the same. We wouldn't be able to compete or play sports because everyone would do them exactly the same. Everyone would write the same songs, paint the same pictures, no. When we work together and love each other, differences and all, like God designed us to do, that's when we're accomplishing his purpose for us. Every person is beautiful to God. Every person matters to God. No matter where they come from, no matter what they've done, no matter what color their skin is, no matter what they think, no matter whether they are male or female, no matter what they talk like, whether they are rich or poor, no matter what their abilities are, or even if, whether they believe in God or not, they are designed to be a self-portrait of God, whether they are like us or different from us. So when you see someone who is different from you, remember, they are a self-portrait of God. And we should treat them with God's love, kindness, and peace. In 1 John 3, one of Jesus' best friends wrote that if we love God, that means we will love other people because God made them and he loves them. He also writes that love isn't just a word or a thought. It's something we do. He writes, Put your love into action, then it will really be love. So how could you show love this week? Could you help someone you know who is hurting? Could you talk to someone who is different from you and learn about them, rather than just trying to tell them about yourself? Could you read a book about someone who lives in a different culture than you do and try to understand how they think, how they feel and see things? Could you invite someone who is different from you to play a game or learn what their favorite things to do are? All those things can be part of loving others. God shows every one of us love, and he challenges us to love others just like he loves us. I'm going to finish up by praying for us. God, thank you so much for every person watching this video. Wherever they are, whoever they are, I know that you love them so much. And help us to share that love with everyone around us. People who are like us, people who are different from us, everyone. In your name, amen. All right, before you go, you should know we've got another exciting edition of Try This at Home for you to watch underneath this video. This week, I am playing No Arms Paint Pictionary. Take a look. I'll see you next time.